Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around one in two women and one in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol, the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion. Whether it's to improve your sleep, I love their sleep gummies, I take them everywhere, your mood or your focus, they even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company, they use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Morse from sexwithemily.com. Do you want to last longer in bed? Promescent is the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. One in three men suffer from premature ejaculation, but they don't have to. Go to promescent.com to get the desensitizing spray that will allow you to have the sex you deserve. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. You can check out all of our podcasts, sign up for our mailing list, which you should do. I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to give away your email address. I'm just going to give you really good information that's going to rock your sex life, just like I do on the show. So, um, yeah, thanks, everyone, for listening, subscribing on iTunes, following me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Sex with Emily, and everywhere else your social media mind roams, you will find me. I'm here with Menace today in the lovely city of San Francisco. Hello. Hello. Thank you for visiting my city. It's great it's to my see city you. Now. You're in Los I Angeles. know. I'm sad. It's actually in my cars outside. I I was here for the new um, opening of the Good Vibration store in Palo Alto, which is a beautiful store. And I was in town for another work thing, and I thought, this is it. I've got the rest of my furniture in my Mini Cooper. There's a few things left. And I'm out. Like I, I'm not a citizen of San Francisco <laughs> anymore. And it feels, you know, I don't know. It feels good. It feels like the year that I've lived in Los Angeles has been really, really good for me. Like good for business, and good for my life, and good change. But I love this city. It's mm-hmm. so in my heart. And but I love you, seeing you. But you did get reminded how much it costs to freaking live here. It is when so we were, Oh, my God. That was hysterical. <laughs> we were outside, and we both had to put money in the meter. It is... 25 cents for every four minutes. Okay, yeah. Do people, can you, okay. People, because I know my mother, like in Michigan, like I'm going yeah. home next week to Michigan. Like, like you get like an hour for a quarter or 30 mm-hmm. minutes for a quarter yeah. or more. Hand. 
a quart, four minutes for a quart. Like it's yeah. It's oh, we have to go down and plug our meters again. We do. It's ridiculous. Anyway, San Francisco and it's blowing up right with all mm-hmm. the t- tech stuff happening. So you know, it's not as pretty in Los Angeles. It's not as whatever, but you know, I feel that Los Angeles is actually uh, they they stop making. Uh, buildings there after the 70s. Everything right. looks so throwback. At least right. the areas that I go, I go to like Fairfax and stuff like that to the shoe stores. So exactly. I can buy Jordans and stuff like that. But, uh, and do you know what's it's crazy? The amount of money it costs to uh, live in San Francisco and for what you get. I was in Florida just recently in Orlando just talking to people and they're, I was just telling them about the plastic bag situation where. <laughs> You can't get plastic no. bags in San Francisco. Or paper bags. No bags. No, pa- no, no, no. You can get paper bags, but you have to spend 10 cents per bag. Right. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's they, outlawed, they outlawed bags. So I, I'll probably be moving to Los Angeles soon. No, but even in Los job. Angeles, they outlawed bags. Not in every town like West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You can get bags, but yeah. in Hollywood, you can't. And so, but yeah, Target's like 10 cents for a bag. It's like, I forget. And the problem is my car is filled with those goddamn bags, but I forget to bring them upstairs. Mm-hmm. And then by the time I'm upstairs at Target in, in LA, it's upstairs, this thing. And yeah. I'm like, I don't want to go back down. And then I pay for the bags. It's really annoying. But you know what? There's It's just like relationships. There's like pros and cons to everything. Yeah. Like the traffic in LA, like there's certain things you can, you know, you just learn what you can live with and which, what, what, what kind of lifestyle you want. What kind of person does that partner you want to be with make you happy in all the ways that you need to be happy? And in the ways that they totally bum you out, mm-hmm. can you live with those things? And that's how can I feel you. about the cities. Um, yeah. I think oh. I'm just going to have an affair with both cities though for a while, <laughs> but that's me. But I was in Orlando and uh, some Sex with Emily listeners tweeted me. Okay. And said, welcome to Orlando. They and did? they listened to the podcast. Yeah, so what's up to everybody in Florida? I love that. Yeah. They saw that you were tweeting about it? Yeah, I'll That's... be in Missouri soon, so what's up to everybody in Missouri? What's up with Missouri? That's amazing. I love that they tweeted you. Yeah, you're a menace Just on Twitter. Just menace on Twitter and then menace on Instagram. And yep, and I'm um, sex with Emily in all those places, and too. And you're going to be in Michigan? I'm going to be in Michigan. Yep. Are you afraid to go back? I'm a little fr- exactly. I'm so afraid. I got really sick this summer in Michigan. I ended up. I was home for five days. Oh, I seen yeah. a month. Oh, why were you? Is why were you? Is that why you were asking me why I'm afraid? Or am no, I afraid I totally, because of the weather? Well, I totally forgot you went back to Michigan and uh, you got sick. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, and you, when you were talking to me and you got sick. I, I didn't really think it was a big deal. We, when you were texting me, it wasn't a really big right. deal. But it was it was a big yeah, deal. Yeah, it was a huge you, deal. You got really sick. Yeah, yeah I if, the if pneumonia. I knew it was that serious, I would have flown out there. Oh, and you're so you. sweet. I swear to God. That's why I, they d- I dumped the guy I was dating because he didn't care, and he would not have flown out there to see me. But yeah, that's I would have totally That was a while ago. when I was talking to you, 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 you were just playing off. Like I know. No big but deal. But I got sicker and sicker. But, the but, but the I reason I say, are you afraid to go back? Because, you know, you were on this television show on Bravo called Misadvised. And I, I uh, assume that you haven't been back since, and right. you know all this stuff. And then there was this guy that you were hanging out with yeah. that was on the show David, and all right? that stuff. And you know, I'm going to see him. <laughs> you I'm going to see him in Michigan. Why? Yeah, because we go to this. <laughs> oh, do you know that he just texted me and asked me to go away with him on vacation? A, B. I go to Michigan every year, and there's uh-huh. this party that happens this time of year that everyone goes to that I know, mm-hmm. and I think he's probably going to be there. But I thought he. He was I uh, honestly, if I was him, I I might have been a little bit upset on the way I was portrayed on the show. No, but he's he was cool with it. Yeah, in fact, which is so which is so but interesting. It made him a star. In it made him a star. In, in no, do you Mich- understand? In yeah. Michigan, he had like a hundred women hit him up on Facebook. Okay, so we, okay, if you guys see yeah. this, I was in the show on Bravo called Misadvised. You can download it on iTunes for like five bucks, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to watch season one, it's actually an interesting show, reality show. Um, if you want to see how I live my life, and he was this guy, my my crush from when I was like in fifth grade, and we get we hook up, we get we get back together, or we mm-hmm. reunite after all these years because yeah. going through divorce, whatever. Final scene, we kind of have this blowout. I shouldn't tell you everything that happens, but whatever. So. But we're still friends, and it was kind of a weird thing. However, but a lot of women objectively say, that guy looked like an asshole. Like, a lot of people. Mm, Yeah. Like, you're asking me right now. The dude got, like, a hundred chicks on Facebook were like, hi, are you the David? And then he, like, banged two of them. So I'm like, good for you. He totally hooked him up. I hooked him up. I'm like, I mean, you look so bad, you look good. And then you got laid. You got your dick sucked because you look like an asshole. Because those are the women who date the bad boys. And I don't understand why why, why, I've never been that girl. Like, Mm -hmm. if a guy is a dick to me, like, you're a bad boy, like, not attractive. I'm not hot. I'm not turned on. It's not interesting. But a lot of women go for that. And I'm not saying that David is a bad boy, the Mm -hmm. guy on the show with me. He's not. But he looked that way on the show. Yeah, he was... So you know what? Just, those but are the crazy dude, ones. You totally hooked him up because he he was just recently divorced when exactly. That happened. So you put him out there. Now he became 
and you know, if he was stuck here in San Francisco, he might be a little bit miserable because it's a you know, it's a big pond. But in Michigan, he was probably a superstar. Oh, superstar! He's so happy. You can put him on television. Put him on the goddamn map. That guy should be happy, right, Venice? I put yes. you on the map too. We had fun on that show. It was good. So long ago, um, not so long ago. It feels like it was a long time ago. It was in this room actually. Stitcher Studios. Download yes. the app. Listen to it on your iPhone. The podcast. It's really easy that way. Okay, so um, today's show, I'm just going to read the emails because I, I've been getting so many emails lately from all of you, and I'm trying, I really want to answer every single one. So thank you for emailing me at feedback at sexwithemily.com. Okay, men who can't orgasm during sex. This topic's come up a lot lately. So, dear Emily, I just started following you, and the podcasts are great. I'm a 20 year old male, and I find it hard to climax during oral sex and sexual intercourse. For example, my first time that ep- my first time that ever that I ever had sex, I could not climax at night or the morning after. I've heard that masturbation affects climax, and also I read on men's health that you should masturbate at least twice a week. I have conflicted reading, so what should I do? Thank you, Emily. Sign Cody. Okay, so um, Cody, if you orgasm easily during masturbation and you become accustomed to that experience, it can affect when you orgasm during intercourse. However. It's totally fine to masturbate, especially two times a week. I mean, most guys, a lot of guys masturbate every single day. Mm. Maybe you can practice masturbating in different ways to orgasm. For example, instead of moving your hand quickly up and down, try slower movements and mix it up. Um, You may also need to find the right position to ejaculate in. Most people, most guys have a favorite position and women that's easier to orgasm in, like doggy style, for example, um, or anvil position, which is missionary position with her legs over your shoulders. A lot of guys can orgasm that way. So maybe you need to have sex with someone for a bit to figure out how to orgasm. You're 20 years old. I'm not sure how much experience you have. But in the meanwhile, when you're with a partner, don't be afraid to explore mutual masturbation and using your hand while she gives you a blowjob. So you can also do that as well. So if you're if you um if you are like you said that you're able to climax no problem when you're masturbating um so I like again just mix up the different techniques that you're using like I think you're still figuring out your body and maybe during sex you know it's just it's harder for you to masturbate because you're so used to one way so I would just again start v- v- uh, adding some variety to your your masturbation masturbation practice and yeah. um yeah what would you say and to that use your uh, human brain come up with you know fantasies your, your fantasies your your most crazy scenarios in your head that probably that would take you to that point. When he's with saying? her, when yeah. he's having sex with her, and he yeah. can't masturbate, is that what you do? So, what like come up with like the crazy supermodel or whatever, whatever chick you're or have her, ba- whatever guy, what do you guys think about? What you're, you're looking at me so funny? No, but like you're saying, come up with some fantasy to get yeah, him there yeah, in his yeah, mind. Yeah. Like use your imagination. That's yeah. a great point, menace. Because I don't have a penis. I don't know what goes on with you guys. If only I could like rent your penis for a day. <laughs> I would love to rent your penis for a day. Would you let me? And also, um, one more thing. If you have a problem, um, if you have the opposite problem, <laughs> which mm-hmm. a lot of men ejaculate sooner yes. than they'd like, they can also check out Promescin. It's the only FDA-approved treatment for lasting longer in bed. So if you go to promescent.com, you get more information, click on the banner, or you just click on the banner on Sex with Emily, it actually, and the thing is that a lot of men, they ejaculate too quickly, but it's not even that some men just want to last a little longer than like, now, they might not be minute men, but it might be like six minutes, but their girlfriend takes 12 minutes to orgasm. So you can use this spray on your penis and shoot. She doesn't even know you're using it and you can feel everything. It just, you stay harder longer. So check out Promescent if you want to do that, um, which is pretty cool for some people who have that issue. You don't have that problem, do you, Menace? No. Would you tell me if you did? <laughs> Probably. Probably not. You no, would? no. Okay. Um, oh, oh, I have to read this. Okay. So everyone's been emailing me. This is crazy. So thank you, everyone. You know that I started my new product line, Emily and Tony emilyandtony.com, which is cool because now it's going to be in store soon and stuff. But I, I had a contest. The first month I launched and I said every show I'm going to give away a candle or I'm going to give away the Down Under Comfort, which is the interesting lo- mm-hmm. uh, ball, ball lotion for men. So I'm wearing I'm, it right now. You're wearing it right now. And I, know, and I love that you wear it because you're not like necessarily a product dude, I don't think, but you know that it helps keep you fresh and all this stuff. So, But here's someone who won the... Um, the massage candles. So I want to thank everyone for sharing your stories with me. We got hundreds of emails from people. And I read all your emails why you think you should win the aromatherapy candles or the downer comfort. The cream to powder formula to keep your intimate areas fresh and clean. So here's one, someone who just won the vanilla candle because there's what they said. Good morning, Emily. I'm writing you to try and receive the cocoa scented. Oh, they want to win the cocoa one. Um, I wanted 
wanted, I'm writing you to try to receive the cocoa scented candle. I just purchased the vanilla candle this morning, but I want to mix and match. My girlfriend had been fooling around with her girlfriends, and it would be nice to have an extra massage oil to go around. I'm excited with the fact that you said it doesn't mess the sheets. I've just recently replaced two sets fooling around with chocolate body paint. I guess it's just impossible to be careful in the moment. Great show, longtime listener. So he's getting lucky mm-hmm. here without even my help, but I've sent him a cocoa candle anyway because he want because he is hooking up with chicks, so he she needs it. But basically, these massage candles are they look like regular candles. They're really beautiful, and but you you light them, and they don't they're not waxy, they're not hot. They turn into this like delicious, luxurious massage oil that's like warm, mm-hmm. and you pour it on your partner's body or his, in his case, these two chicks' bodies. Don't you love a guy who's like I'm kicking up for their best friend too? And you pour <laughs> it over their bodies and you give massages, and it's like delicious. Uh, smells delicious. Keeps you, keeps you smooth. What are you laughing at? This no. guy's like, I've got two babes, so I need another candle. What? Uh, no, I was just thinking about the So you gave me a candle, right? Yeah. And uh, I I mean, I use the down under stuff and the, the other stuff you give me, but the candle, I always forget, is in the trunk of my car. Thanks, right? dude. I, yeah, I feel good about that. No, yeah. no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest right now. Yeah? So I always forget the candle is in there. I want to take it into my house, but I always forget that it's there. Okay. And you know that every other weekend I'm taking a flight somewhere and I always leave the car at uh, my girlfriend's parents' house. Okay. Okay. So every time I go to leave the car, I leave, I give them the keys to the car and I park it in the garage and I'm always taking the stuff out of the trunk and I always see it in the trunk and I have to like, like hide it. Honey, but it looks like a, but but here's the thing. The thing about the products are, they don't even say massage, you can't tell, it looks like a regular candle. It's like, it's a great gift for the holidays. You you don't have to use it as a candle. It doesn't, it doesn't look like, it doesn't say like XXX on the side of it. No, 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 that's why it looks like skincare products, right? It totally looks like skincare products, but I, you get embarrassed because the parents, right? Yeah, they're going to see, you know, I have It's not like I gave you like the tank of masturbation sleep or anything. The thing is like, I, you know, one day I, I'm going to forget and it's going to be there in the trunk. And they're like, oh, this is a nice candle. And it's going to be like burning in the middle of their house, you know, somewhere when I get back right. from a trip or something right. like just that. Just take out your goddamn <laughs> trunk and bring it in with your girlfriend. She'll love it. Women love candles. And All and I, kind of I've i had a lot of great foreplay situations with these candles, cool. I have to say. And then that's just, just, you know, you have a bad memory. I have a bad memory that it's in there. I, I'm sorry. But the other products I love. How are the socks from the Kardashian dot guy? Oh, my God. The... Arthur George from yeah. Bob Kardashian. Love it. Good. So glad. Okay. That <laughs> Thank makes me you. happy. Yeah, I love it. Anytime. That was Warm all the time. And they're very comfortable. Good. I love that. That's what I was on the Chris Jenner show. Okay. Hello, Emily. I've been following your show for a few months, and I can really see that my sex life has improved. I've been together with my girlfriend for a while now, and since I'm a nice guy, the hardest time for me is when she has her period. She loves giving BJs, and she keeps me very happy, but I want to return the favor. Until now, I give her a massage, but I want to do more. You've talked about some breast breast orgasms, and I've searched your archive for information about this, but I don't feel like it gives enough information. Can everyone have a breast orgasm? How long until you get there? How do you move your hands and mouth? Keep up the good work. Regards, Larry. Uh, Larry, I'm so glad your sex life has improved from the show. That makes me so happy. Okay. And I love that when she has a period, like, okay, I thought you were going to say the hardest time she has a period because she's on, she's kind of mm-hmm. being a bitch and she's bloody or whatever. But you're saying, you're such a good guy, Larry, that you're saying she's giving me blowjobs and I want to please her and I might want to give her a nipple orgasm, a breast orgasm, which is the second most common type of orgasm. Did you know that? I didn't know it was the second. Yeah, second most common orgasm wow. is breast. And not every woman can have them, no. Did she so, say you hate those women? I hate those women. <laughs> I hate the women who are just like, oh, oops, I had an orgasm within two minutes. And oh, I, had the, I was riding my bike when I was eight and I had one and I haven't stopped ever since. Some women have orgasms really easily. I'm just not one of those women. It's not hard, but it's not like easy, no problem. And I know I'm not a breast, but I'm working on the breast orgasm. In fact, I got some nipple clamps from Good Vibes. Um, I've never played with them before. But mm-hmm. I like different sensations on my nipples. Like, this is what I think about the nipple thing. Well, I should get back to Zancer and then get back to my right. nipples. And after, okay. after this, I will talk about my nipples. So stay tuned. First, Larry says, can everyone have a breast orgasm? Um, I don't see any reason why not. Every woman. Um, most women, I think, do not. However, I also believe, like in everything in life, 
if you try to have a nipple orgasm, like if you were like, I'm going to work on it, I'm going to put lube on it, I'm going to have my partner rub it, or I'm going to do it myself, I'm going to use vibrations. I mean, play with your breasts and your nipples and figure out what turns her on. So, so she might be able to, she might not, but you might as well try. I mean, I believe if you do the right thing to them and every woman is different, she might just have one. Um, how long until you get there? Again, different with every woman. Some woman can have a breast orgasm after 10 minutes. You might want another woman. You might have to work on her for an hour. And then how do you move your hands and mouth? Again, this is really different with 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 with, with all women. But the, the trick to the breast is that you always want to start a lot slower. So like I always tell men, go five times slower than you think you normally would and softer. So maybe you want to cup her breasts first, like cup them, you know, on the sides and start rubbing the sides. That feels really good to a woman's breasts. And then slowly, like start moving your fingers like around her areola around her nipples and see how she starts to react. You can like lick your finger or you can use some lube and make and see like if she likes a little wet, you can blow on it. So I would say you can, you can nibble, nibble on the nipple. A lot of women like that. And then see how much she can take. Like, is she moaning? Does she say, ouch? If she says, ouch, don't do the nibbling, then just do the licking, you know? But some women really like their nipples like pinched and, 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 and some women can just have orgasms from you on their nipples if you just go around and around with your tongue. So I'm telling you, you got to experiment with everything I just said. Use a little you lube, use some fingers, and, and don't squeeze them and don't, don't like really hard and pull mm-hmm. on them. But, but, you know, the nipples can take some more, you know, some more toughness. But the, but the breasts just start off soft and gentle. So um, the same part of your brain that gives you sensations to the vagina actually brings sensations to the breasts. And that's why women can have breast orgasms. So may also, Larry, you can make the nipples tense by placing your fingers on each side of the nipple. Push down slightly and slide your fingers apart. Move the breasts in slow, circular motions. Start gentle. Take her lead and how she likes them touched. And then also, like I said, you can use her tongue. And then when her nipples get erect, which happens, as you know, Manus, with women's mm-hmm. nipples, you can harden your tongue and flick it back and forth and slowly take it in your mouth and then begin to suck and nibble. Um, this also, you can, this is what I like people like, I like, suck then release her nipples while inhaling. So it creates, it creates this like icy sensation. You can also put an ice cube in your mouth and you can suck on her nipples. Those are a lot of nipple tips. Okay. Also check out the nip, lip and tingle at Mm classicerotica.net. So, you know, crazy girl, classic erotica, go to my website and click on the crazy girl banner. Um, They have this erotic lip, nip and tingle. It's amazing. I did a video about it. It's Rock Candy Crush Flavor 23. It's a sinfully sweet temptation to tease and please. There's raw sugar crystals that mingle with a blast to delight and excite. It's sugar-free, body safe, no animal testing. And um, use coupon code EMILY and you get 25% off all their really – they have like really – like. They have, like, products for your nipples, for your lips, for your butt, for your, like, everything. Cool, icy products. Check them out. So, um, yeah. Have you ever met the woman who had a, a nipple, had, had a breast orgasm? Yes, I have. And what, what were you doing to her? It, Do you remember? It wasn't that much. You're right. She yeah. just had it, right? She just, yeah. Some women can just, just have it. So, it didn't really take that much work. Really? Like, did yeah. you just touch it or did you just, like, do you remember what you did? Yeah, just, you know, touch it and, and you know, pinch the nipple and stuff like that. And the thing is, damn it. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know if she's married or whatever, but I, I really wanted to ask her because since then she had um, breast enhancements. Oh, and you want, I and would I wanted, never, huh? if I could have an orgasm through my breast, I would not, I would not. Yeah, I just want to know if, if it's, I mean, it might be, you know, kind of weird after, you know, many years saying, oh, hey, I just want to call and ask you, can you still have a nipple orgasm after your breast implants? But um, maybe I should... I, I'll hit up you her could, sister. Like, I still yeah. talk to her sister. Why don't you just tweet her? I should. Uh, and she's not much on. <laughs> chicks, you know? Hey, babe, you still get those nipple orgasms? So but I'm they, down for know, it. So, oh, so. Some women, once they, they get uh, you know involved with the guy, that they totally forget about you know the internet and all that kind of yeah, stuff. So that's true. you know it's kind of hard to keep tabs on what's going right, on. Right, and with she them. might be insulted if you want to know. And I always I always know the instant a chick has become single again yeah. because then they're all over the internet. They are, right? That day. <laughs> they just disappear for years and then suddenly they're Update just, the profile picture, yeah, like everywhere. the whole thing. Right. That's what happens. Because you got to read so predictable. No, men do the same thing. And I can tell when uh, people are about to break up too. How? I can tell because, you know, when they first get together, there'll be a picture of both of them in the photo. Then the, like the timeline will be always I pictures agree. of them like out somewhere and then slowly 
the, it's like uh, Back to the Future, you know, when Marty McFly started yes. disappearing from the photos. Slowly, the 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 guy will start disappearing <laughs> from the photos. I noticed that too. And then, boom, he's yeah, gone. Yeah, it's gone. Day. Yeah, exactly. Relationship <laughs> status, game over. Exactly. That's why people, you should not put your relationship status yeah. on Facebook. You don't. Everyone's uh-huh. gonna know. Although a study came out two years ago, it's funny. I got interviewed by the New York Post the other day. Mm-hmm. They wanted to know why it's so common that people break up over the holidays in December. And there was actually a study that came out. The most recent study I could find was a Facebook study that came out in 2010 that said that the two weeks before Christmas were the all time high. For people breaking up because Facebook measured, you know, people's wow. like must have been relationship status all time high the entire year. And the 25th was like the lowest. Like no one is doing it on that day. You're either going to dump them before the 25th yeah. or you're going to dump them after. Is, but it, it is it, it is a big time of year. Like people's emotions run high. They they you know, they don't want to buy them uh, presents. They yeah, don't want to yeah. go home with their family <laughs> again. Or they just like or they're like, is this the part yeah. they're reevaluating their life? Their year. If, yeah. You know, do, they want con- to. Exactly. Know, don't want to go into the new person. year. Yeah. With a nuke with someone. So wow. what were you gonna say? You were, I thought you were gonna say. No, that's what I was up. gonna ask you. It was probably like the gifts and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. The gifts. You I know, love what if I, I was <sighs> with you all year and I still didn't want to be with you, I'd still get you a gift. That, you that, that's just the guy that Okay, I am. how many months do you have to be how many how many months do you have to be with someone before you have to buy him a gift? Or how long do you think like if you're dating someone for three weeks, do you have to get him a gift on Christmas? Dude, on holidays? Can, I, can I tell a story to <laughs> yes. you? I feel so bad. What did you I know? Feel so bad. So it's like one of my like really first real girlfriends in like high school. We get together a week before Valentine's Day. <sighs> And I was like, oh, it's a week before Valentine's Day. We're barely even together. She got me all this stuff on Valentine's Day. I didn't get her anything. Oh. I feel still bad to this day, to this day about it. Do you remember it. her name? Send her some flowers. Yeah. Tina. No. What's up, Tina? You were in high school, though. She's in Florida, I think. Somewhere. Right. But, right. Um, you were just there. You could have brought her something. Oh, yeah. I should have brought her something. I think she's married. Oh, well, it happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. We all do stupid things when we're younger. You but I feel know. bad about it. I know feel bad about it. It's okay. That's good that you feel bad. Yeah. You probably won't, won't do that again. But it's hard. But what I'm saying is, though, like, right now, like, I've been dating someone for a month. Yeah. Oh, you still got You got Like, what do I get him? What do I get what, what? A month gift? Uh, but guys don't really care. No, some guys them. care. Some guys care. Well, they're vaginas. <laughs> I mean, we're not, like, committed. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. ugh, I just, I want to leave the country for a month is what I want to do. No, just get him. I'm going to go away, though, I think, by myself on a vacation over Christmas. Mm. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. Are you serious? Yeah. For a that, month? Where? Um, I don't know yet. I, I actually, no, 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 not a month. I'm going to go for a week. Go but, to Jamaica. Yeah, why Jamaica? I don't know. I'm going there. When? Oh, you want me to come with you on your trip? Yeah, let's go to Jamaica. You hardly want me to come with you on your trip. <laughs> um, so are you really going to go there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, ooh, okay, this question. Okay. This is a common question. How do I get my wife to be more sexually open? Dear Emily, my wife and I have known each other since we were 18 and have been married for 17 years. Ever since we started having sex, my wife has never liked foreplay and only wants vaginal missionary intercourse. Hell yeah. In What's 20 up? years of knowing her, man, is psyched. <laughs> give her, give her yeah. a number. I think she's let me go down on her twice, never for more than a few minutes, oh and very God. rarely lets me use my hands and fingers on or in her. She sounds like a gift. She used to go down on me or give me hand jobs from time to time, but now rarely touches my penis at all. She never oh. wears any of the laundry I've given her over the years and very rarely makes a move on me sex is pretty much arranged and agreed as we brush our teeth and get ready to say mm. good night although she's beautiful she's petite five three 125 pounds i know she has a lot of body image issues and sees herself in the worst light i also know that motherhood really makes her physically and mentally tired and she constantly suffers from a lack of energy I tell her all the time how wonderful and beautiful she is, and I think how sexy and desirable I find her, but I think she thinks I'm patronizing her. She never talks about sex, but I fear she's not enjoying our sex since I, all I do is enter her and orgasm several minutes later. Mm. She commented a few weeks ago that it makes her uncomfortable when I try to go down at her or do other things. That conversation started when I asked her to give me a hand job. My request did not go well. I just feel like our sex life is so limited and that she would enjoy it more if she'd let go a little. Selfishly, I also wish she'd show more desire towards me and interest in doing things to pleasure me. What can I do to help her loosen up and get her to enjoy sex? Thanks, Stephen. Whoa, Steve. This is this is a heavy one because, first of all, this is probably the most common question I get asked. And this is a show I just did a few weeks ago with, um, you know, Dr. Drew Pinsky. His wife, Susan Pinsky, um, came on my show and actually talked about their marriage. It was a very insightful, open inter- interview that she did. And she revealed a lot because basically the show is about mismatched libidos. 
This is what we're talking about. He wants it more than she does. She wants it more than he does. How the hell do couples reconcile this situation? It happens. And of course, the first, you know, six months to a year you're with someone, you're in the ripping your clothes off each other, kinky pants. Oh, my God. Sex is amazing. You're having Mm -hmm. sex every day. But that doesn't last forever. So what do you do? And then things settle into place and you realize, oh, I need it every day. She needs it once a month. What do we do? So. If you want to listen to this podcast, it's very interesting because Susan's been with Dr. Drew for 30 years and she went through a lot and did not want sex for about 19 years after she had triplets. So she went through. So, but that's a whole other story Um, a little bit because her thing was about hormone replacement therapy. But the first thing I have to say to you is you guys have been together for 17 years since you were 18. So if I do the math, you're 35, um, I think. So, um, Stephen, you've never talked about sex. So this is a lot of time that has passed with you guys. I mean, I think that this is sort of in crisis mode because it sounds to me that, you know, you're not even saying that everything else is great in your relationship and all this stuff. Um, but but the fact that she doesn't want to have sex and she's not open, that might just be who she is. But I also think that you have to, that, that if it's been ever since, you know, she got kids and she's tired or body image, she might need to go into some therapy. She should, first thing she should do is get checked out by a physician. She might have hormone drops after kids. Um, this is what happened with Susan Pinsky is that her, she had early menopause and her hormone level was off. And she didn't – until she had hormone therapy, pelvis pellet therapy, she all of a sudden started feeling, you know, amazing. Yeah, but she can, she's married to a freaking doctor and they couldn't figure it out. So there could actually be something medically going on with your partner, with your wife – um, and that's always the first thing. Like, is she taking meds? Is she taking birth control? Is she on antidepressants? All these are libido killers. So we have to first rule out or figure out if there's any physical thing going on. Okay. So then once we rule that, that out and she just says, no, I don't like sex. I believe that you have to also then, Stephen, spend some time talking to her in a way. Now, when you just ask a woman for a hand job, you just say, hey, babe, I want a hand job. Of course, she's going to react that way because you haven't warmed her up and you don't know what she needs from you. She doesn't want you to go down on her. She doesn't. Do you ever ask her what she does want? Maybe she wants a foot rub. Maybe she wants a back rub. Maybe she doesn't feel appreciated by you because I'm making this up. Maybe she used to bring her flowers all the time and you don't bring her little gifts anymore. And to her, those gifts meant showed love. It's different in every relationship. Or maybe you never ask about her day. Or maybe you don't take the trash out when you say you are. I don't know what it is, but there's something going on here where you guys are not connecting. And you've been together for so long and you've never talked about sex. So I almost want, I do want to say that I do believe it's time for couples therapy for you guys. And maybe you should even see a sex therapist, but I would start with couples therapy because usually couples therapy... Usually the sex issues in a relationship stem from some underlying thing has happened. So you started to pull away. Maybe it was after kids. You know, maybe the kids, it was, just, I understand you have kids. It's really hard to, to like, you know, make time for sex. But it sounds like this is lots of years and lots of miscommunication. She doesn't like the same things that you like. Maybe she had sexual trauma when she was little. I mean, we don't know. I think that there need, if you want to save this marriage and you want to stay together, you've got to get intimate and serious in your conversations with her before you can get that way sexually. So I would recommend therapy or if you feel that you guys have good communication on your own which I'm not so sure about by your, by your email you can start talking to her about you know you know what what, what does turn around sexually what are her fantasies um, does she ever have any does she ever think about sex and you know what a simple thing to say to her is babe so what's the most memorable time that we've ever had sex together what what what, what one time six ever had and she might say that time that we were away in Jamaica for the week well, who knows maybe you need a vacation so Find out where she lives on the sexual compass and start to find out more information. Yeah, I was just going to say two things, kind of going back to uh, doing doing things for her, maybe being more spontaneous and surprising her, not really playing out things like, hey, I'm. You know what? I want to take you. We're going to go do this. We're going to go do that. I know not, you know, every couple of money might be tight. Sounds like you have children. You know, just be creative and come up with different ideas and, you know, just just be ha- have a couple surprises in the your back pocket. It's true. And then also, I it sucks because he only talks about sex. I wonder like what her demeanor is exactly. during the day. It's just right. like the day to day. And I, I mean, if she had a if she has a bad a bad attitude, oh man, like and with what he's talking about, I'd be so miserable. Right, I'd be miserable. And it's kind of hard when a person has uh, a bad. Uh, 
bad mood constantly, like ha- to turn that around. Exactly. Don't you think? Well, that's why I'm saying because it could be some kind of depression she's mm-hmm. going through. It could be some. I mean, th- there could be so many things going on. I mean, it could be diet, nutrition. I mean, I, I don't know what it is, but yeah, if she's a bummer to be around and he's not getting his needs met. Couples mm-hmm. just like brush us under the background. And I, that's why I love when people email me about this because like I really want to help people because I do think, and again, listening to the, not for, the Susan Pinsky show, I mean, it was so interesting how she, I mean, they had triplets. Can you imagine having three yeah. kids at once? And then like just like not, you know, like trying to work on their sex life, but having kids and having all this stuff going on in their life. I mean, it's, it's really, really hard, but they stuck together and they found a solution. And I'm just like, hallelujah, hallelujah, because so many couples can't, like too much time passes and they, mm-hmm. they the, the, the issues get so deep and they don't work on them. And then the relationship yeah, ends. Yeah. So when you go on a cruise. <laughs> yeah. Did you have I, lots of sex? I hope. I just, just kept cruise, right. Yeah. I went to cruise uh, through the Caribbean. And uh, when you go on the cruise, on every cruise line, that I know of and that I've been on, they, they pair you up with, with different couples. Like, I guess they go through your profile and like how, how, how old you are and stuff like that. So every time like you for go, swinging, no, just, they <laughs> pair you up with couples when you go to have dinner. Oh. So you, you don't sit at dinner by yourself. You sit at dinner with other people. Okay. And so, uh, we were with two other couples and one of the couples, the girl, the girl in the couple was just such a downer. Like everything was you just couldn't change tables. I mean, if we wanted to, but like the other couple we were with were cool. And then the husband of the girl was, he was really cool too, okay. but it just her, like, what she did constantly just neg- negative about just everything. Like, you know, Oh, things, what, how thing, how much stuff costs or like she's on a like, cruise. Like, what are you complaining about? You know, you're on like, vacation. You're, you're so lame. You, you're you bringing know, me down. Yeah, It's just like, you're a buzzkill. I'm like, how, yeah. I mean, like, how can you be? Around somebody that's just a buzzkill. <laughs> exactly, like isn't that, that interesting? That wanting to turn it around, right? And if I couldn't turn around that person's mood, I'm sorry, I would be out, right? I, I can't. I, well, I, couldn't I couldn't be with, with anyone with neg- who brings yeah negative yeah. energy and brings me down. Maybe he doesn't even realize anymore. Maybe or maybe some people they get off and like trying to make the partner happy. He's like, I'll yeah. make her happy. Just like women yeah. are like, I'm going to change them. Guess what, people? The person you're dating right now, they're not going to change. They're absolutely not going to change. The only way they might change is if they say to you, you know what? I'd like to change. I'd actually like to change in this one area, but if you're thinking that you've got some Jedi mind trick that's going to change them, it's not going to happen. It's the same thing with drug users. You can't tell them not to, right. Can't tell them they need to stop doing drugs. No. They they have to realize that they, they have, have to realize that they have to they have to hit the, they have to hit the rock bottom. So I think that's a really important message. So that's what we got time for today. Um, everyone, check out everything I got going on at sexwithemily.com. Tell your friends, if you guys are liking the show and you're enjoying it and you're loving it, say, hey, guess what I learned on Sex with Emily? We'd love to have more listeners. Um, we'd love to hear from you at feedback at sexwithemily.com. And also, um, you can also get me on my Facebook page, like my Facebook page, Sex with Emily, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Sex with Emily. What else is there? Google Plus. I mean, do you use all that stuff, Menace? I uh, use it all. Snapchat. <laughs> I'm on everything. What's the other one? Oh, Vine. Have you started doing Vine yet? Uh, well, Vine's old man it's not old but i'm doing <laughs> vines now oh you are I mean, it's old it's I mean, old but whatever it's been around for a while i know but now it, but it was it's not okay no. well i'm doing some vines but what else people that do do vines are really creative they're i know awesome. they're super fun i know some people in la so i'm gonna be doing some stuff with them so anyway check out um check out menace m-e-n-a-c yeah on instagram <laughs> and twitter instagram is always my favorite because the visual aspect right and if you want to see the caribbean I have uh, twenty over twenty beautiful photos of that. Oh, and check out our this other stuff. I'm oh, I'm gonna be doing uh, really cool. If you're into like big bands like Arcade Fire, I love Arcade Fire. Um, who else is gonna be Queens of Stone Age, uh, AFI? Who you just hung out with? I just hung out with them in Love Line, and uh, just uh, over like twenty other bands. Lord, who she has a giant song uh, right now called Royals. Um, on December, or just follow me on Twitter. I'm gonna tweet out. Where? I'm, I, Huh? Here in San Francisco? Here concert. in San Francisco, but I'm doing a national webcast where oh. I'm going to be interviewing all these bands live backstage at a concert for two days. So, Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'll tweet it out. I know it's not sex. Maybe I'll ask some of the bands sex People on the show listen to music. You don't <laughs> yeah. just care about sex, right? Yeah. People? Yeah. But I know. Um, oh, yeah, like uh, big bands like Phoenix. Like Can I go? Huge bands. Let's, no, I won't be here. If you want to go. But they're having the same concert in LA. You should just go. All right, I'll one. go to that one. Okay. But... Yeah, if you want to check that out, I will be tweeting out some links. Uh, be giving away free tickets or anything? Slash, 
menace. Yeah, I do. I, I'm giving away free menace. tickets if you live in the area. If you live in the Bay Area. If you're if you don't, just watch it online. You can you can tweet me questions and I will ask cool. the band the questions. God, like menace. That. So yeah. multi purpose functional. I try. Fun, multi functional man. Cool. Okay, everyone. Um thanks so much for listening to Sex with Emily. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com. Hi, I'm Emily from sexwithemily.com. What if giving oral sex tasted like strawberries or chocolate? Mask makes these delicious strips like a breath strip, only better. They make oral sex taste like chocolate, strawberry, watermelon, or mango. Make sex more pleasurable for you and your partner by going to sexualflavors.com.